I have been doing these fan fiction stories for a while, and still, my most frequent request is to do another story like The Marriage Stone, which involves Harry and Snape. I don't know if that's just because The Marriage Stone is an amazing story, and one of the best I have ever read, or because I did a good job. But the fact is, I've not been able to do this pairing again because I've not been able to find a story that was as good as The Marriage Stone or even kept the two satisfactorily in character up until this point. And I do not want to do something that twists Snape into this pretty boy or Harry into a sex fiend. However, I finally managed to find a story that keeps them both reasonably in character, has some fun twists, and is interesting to boot. So, I present to you The Courtship of Harry Potter by Diana Williams, or D.K. Williams. Based on the book series Harry Potter, narrated for you by Sierra Fees. Chapter 1. Announcements. Well, Severus, I expect you have been waiting for this term to start for a long time, haven't you? Snape looked up from his stack of papers with a frown. His gaze landed on the only other occupant of the staff lounge, not that he wouldn't have preferred to see just about anyone else, including famous Harry Potter. The current DADA instructor was leaning against the doorframe, smirking in that appalling, we know something no one else does, way that made Snape want to hex him into next week. Only the knowledge that Albus Dumbledore would be upset with him if he did kept his itchy fingers from reaching for his wand. Maximilian, Max to my friends, Spindly Worm, had the dubious honor of being the only defense against the dark arts teacher in recent history to have survived his first year in the position and returned for a second. He was also, in Snape's opinion, barely more competent than Lockhart and nearly as conceited, and it was a miracle that he hadn't managed to kill himself or any of his students. Yet... Although, if he kept smirking in that infernal way, Snape just might fix that problem for him. What are you going on about, Worm? He asked, irritated at being pulled away from his work. He had planned on finishing these last sets of essays before the staff started drifting back from the Christmas holidays, and the deserted staff room had seemed the ideal place. But if the DADA instructor was going to loiter about chattering, he thought he'd be better off returning to the dungeons. It's Max, the DADA teacher reminded him reproachfully, coming further into the room. A young Malfoy is a seventh year, correct? Yes, Snape said and allowed himself to relish the thought for a long moment. This was the last year he would have to teach Malfoy, Potter, Granger, and the Weasley boy. Six more months and they'd be gone. One more year after that and the last Weasley would be out of his hair. At least until the younger generation started breeding. Given the way Granger and the Weasley boy looked at each other, that wouldn't be long. And... You are intending to court him, aren't you, old boy? Snape blinked at him. I beg your pardon. Max smiled engagingly. I don't mean to pry, of course, but we've all assumed. At the continuing puzzled look on Snape's face, Max's smile widened. By Jupiter, you haven't the foggiest idea what I mean, do you? Snape looked at him crossly and snapped. I usually don't, nor do I wish to be enlightened in case it has escaped your limited intelligence. I am occupied at the moment. Max ignored him, straddling a chair as he sat down across some Snape. The Eratstes writes, man! To tell me you've forgotten! Snape closed his eyes. He had forgotten the tradition deliberately. It brought up certain... Unpleasant memories, ones he'd just as soon keep buried. He absently rubbed his left arm, for as long as he was allowed, at any rate. Not surprising, I suppose. After all, there are so few of our social standing here, unlike back at Bobatons. Max sighed, sounding decidedly nostalgic, and Snape considered throwing up. On spindly worm, if at all possible. And if old Barty Crouch taught us nothing else, it was the folly of taking on someone outside our class. 
I heard that at the funeral, the boy actually threw himself on the grave, crying and tearing out his hair. He shuddered delicately. Which proves that the Weasley family may be old, but they're definitely not our sort. No, Snape said absently. Not that you'll have to worry about any excessive emotionalism with young Malfoy, Max said briskly. A lord the young man has been brought up to know his proper place. Yes, Snape said, still wrapped up in his own thoughts. Then he shook himself and glared at the DADA teacher. I fail to see what interests you could possibly have in my personal life. Or is it that you are interesting in pursuing Draco? Max laughed and gave him a hearty back slap, nearly knocking Snape face first into the table. No! Dear Merlin, no! Your way he's clear, old man, he said, winking at Snape. I have other game in mind. Snape blinked, rapidly scanning through the list of seventh years in his mind, trying to determine who among their class might have caught the other man's fancy. None of the Slytherin boys. With the exception of Draco Malfoy, there wasn't a decent-looking intelligent one in the lot, although the not-boy was tolerable. Gryffindor, Dodo lost there, all half-bloods or middle class. There was one Ravenclaw boy and two of the Hufflepuffs, but he hardly thought they were Worms type. The Entwhistle family wasn't even 500 years old, after all. Despite Snape's personal opinion of the man, the Worm family was nearly as old as the Snapes, Malfoys, and Dumbledores, and he couldn't see Max settling for one of the newer wizarding families. Not unless there was something in it for him. Young Potter, of course! Max said impatiently when Snape didn't respond quickly enough. Potter! Snape exclaimed. Have you completely lost your mind? Just the opposite, Max said, winking at Snape. I expect he'll be quite the favorite when he leaves school, and I intend to lay claim before then. He quirked an eyebrow at Snape. Don't tell me that you have aspirations in that area. Don't be imbecilic, Snape snorted. I can barely tolerate the little snot. Well then, Max said, sitting back with a satisfied air as if the matter had already been settled with the boy. You don't understand, Snape said impatiently. The boy's been raised by muggles. He wanted the slightest idea what you're suggesting. And if he did have an idea, he'd probably be disgusted. Max waved away the suggestion. He's a powder, old boy. In the long run, blood will tell. It didn't with his father, Snape retorted. The man married a muggle-born witch straight out of school. Which is another thing. Despite the Potter name, Harry's not a pure blood. Max shrugged. In his case, I'm willing to make an exception. He leered at Snape. Shall we place a wager on which of us gets our boy first? Don't be obscene. Snape snapped. Max stood up and stretched. Starting to develop a middle class morals, Severus? Sounds like you've been socializing with the wrong crowd. Young Draco should be just the ticket to fix you up. He winked at Snape. I'll let you know how my progress with the Potter boy goes, shall I? Max walked toward the door, a swagger in his step, and only Snape's promise to Dumbledore kept him from throwing a hex at the vanishing figure. Instead, he swore out loud and in three languages, as his mind desperately raced to find a solution to this new threat to the Potter boy. Dumbledore, he thought, of course, Albus would be just the one to stop the worm from getting his hands on the boy.